I honestly think it was like a month. I, I, I we did this a month after I had Arthur, and I was in some kind of weird post baby, like post birth trance. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. 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 The whole thing was a trance, a pregnancy too. It's clearly put me in. I know, put me in some kind of good writing space. <laughs> When you came out and, and you, to me, were like a modern folk singer, like to me, you were armed with an acoustic guitar and these incredible songs. Yeah. And, and you've just become this kind of ethereal, modern techno muse. <laughs> I always thought I was going to end up being like a techno muse because that's the music I grew up with. Right. You know, my earliest memories was like listening to Orbital. Um, and, you know, I... I I was I was really inspired by them. Um, but when I when I first started, like I don't know, um, yeah, ma like making music in my my late teens, I guess. So yeah, I thought that was how I where the direction I was always going to go in. And mm. you know, the first people I contacted on like back in the day on MySpace were like electronic producers. Like Burial was the first person I reached out wow, to. Wow, crazy! In the early days, it was just me and guitar, and and the idea of then getting rid of the guitar and it just being me was like the scariest thing. It was always, I, I, you know, I didn't, I never, I never thought that like I'd be singing without my guitar the first time I put it down uh, and just, and it was just me and it mm. felt so strange. Um, but I need to pick it back up again. I've become lazy with guitar. What kind of relationship do you have with music on a day-to-day -day basis though? Because you have, you know, real grown-up, mature life stuff going on now. You know, you have responsibilities and you have to inspire people in different ways than just through the art. And so, you know, how do you do the art thing? How, how does it factor in? I I mean, I obviously listen to music every day. It's just part of my everyday life. Like so many people, I'm sure, that come on this show, you know, I, I live it, I breathe it. And um, I always have since I was really young. And um, I just thought, I just assumed everybody was into music the same way I was at the moment combination of my son and like I don't know dealing with anxiety stuff at the moment I do listen to a lot of classical what's your attitude when it comes to like syncs and things like that not being sampled because obviously Ali's probably the most sampled modern singer in modern hip-hop and R&B history along with Sanfa you and Sanfa like ridiculous mm -hmm. but when it comes to like movies and tv shows and 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 you know when people want to use your songs what's your default position on that oh god I love it I love that yeah um I mean, I've always, I, I, when my love for music came from listening to, you know, film soundtracks and um, I'd remember moments from a film, mostly because of the music. The music would take me back to the moment rather than the other way around. And yeah. so, so yeah, God, that's always kind of been my, my dream. The idea of my music being part of that crucial moment in a, in a TV show or a film. Yeah, God, that's the dream. So I always say yes, yeah. always, yeah. which is why I've done, I have done quite a lot of little film and tv things and and you know eventually i'd love to compose something for a film maybe i actually just uh let me go right in with it i have made like a classical album in the past couple of years um, wow. with a few friends uh we just have to finish it um but yeah so i'm kind of like moving towards that i think that'll be so fun. it's you and a quartet or a small selection of players or how it's is just it? a cut it's just myself and, and a couple of um people i've played with do you miss la at all do you like it i do like la um i don't come here enough um I instantly feel healthier. I do sleep better while I'm here. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the sun. Mm -hmm. um, some helps my, I don't know, what is it called? Circa circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I never knew how to say that. Yeah. But yeah, I do like being here. It always feels like stuff's always happening and people are always here. And I instantly... I, I instantly have to socialize when I'm here, which, which doesn't <laughs> really happen much in London for whatever reason. Um, but like, yeah, every, everyone's friendly here. Like someone was saying last night, you know, it's not, it's not, a f it's not a fake place like that you know, people call it a fake place a lot in the UK and it's actually just maybe people are just nice here you know Calvin said yeah. this this is great advice if you want to live in LA and you don't you're not from LA then you should be then don't move to LA unless you're invited which hmm. I think is really good advice you're a regular collaborator of his now I love that he puts you in the 140 to 145 happy techno vibe <laughs> He really took you there. I know. Actually, we have. We also had another song that never like saw the light. I thought it was great. He wasn't so keen on it. Um, he was like, "Oh, your bit was, your bit was good." I just didn't like the other bit. The way he described it to me was that he almost had to convince you to do this type of performance a little bit because you can do so much and you you were somewhere else. And he was like, "I need you to kind of come and be on this." Because yeah. you're the only person who can. Actually, the notes in that song are giving me anxiety, the thought of singing them right now. Um, not that I'm going to have to sing them right now, but uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, it takes me back to, uh, I used to sing in that kind of register and I used to sing with that kind of like 
tone, I guess, um, I didn't think I had anymore. And then he got me in the studio and a bit of muscle memory and um, just like singing over and over. I don't think, and I, I don't know, people might not share this opinion, but I don't think he's ever done anything bad. I don't think he's ever made anything that isn't good. That's just my opinion. Like Love Regenerator, all, the, mm. all his side mm. stuff. <clears throat> the last record, you know, some people were like, oh, we wish he went back to his old style. But um, I genuinely have loved every single thing he's d ever done. Yeah. So I had no doubt in my mind that that uh, when he messages me with a song, it's not just some random thing that he stumbled across that he thought, oh, maybe Ellie could do this. You yeah. know, he was very sure in his head. And that's what he's like as a producer. He's, yeah. he's one of the most like confident in the best possible way. So on April the 7th, we have a new album, which um, obviously I, you know, I listened to and congratulations. It is a brilliant temp up-tempo pop. Like, That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's confident. It's got a real confidence to it. And I know that you've been like all artists on a journey through lots of different feelings and tones and tempos and vibes to try and find a space. But this one yeah. just is kind of running out the door. I think it was probably a direct reaction to you know, lockdown and I got back together with a few writers I worked with over the years and we'd all come from different places and we were all just like, I mean, nobody's in the mood to write a ballad or, yeah. you know, to talk about our feelings and how, how much things had, had sucked over the past couple of years. Um, I think we were all keen to just like shake that off and sing about being free again mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having this kind of, it was quite nice because it, it was, you know, Brightest Blue was quite a heavy album for me. Heavy to perform, yep. heavy to write. And so, God, the idea that I could just go in and sing and become this kind of character and have a different persona and sing about love and, and sexuality and um, just being, I don't know, on some other planet, hmm. um, that really appealed to me. And it appealed to everyone in the, in the studio, in the room, and it just happened naturally. The two things that really I, I think about when I think about 2020 and 2021 are, number one, I'm so grateful that I'm still here. Yeah. And I never want to forget that there are millions of people who were taken from us yep. through that time. I just don't ever want to forget that because I think it's really important that we remember that like, you know, life is precious, right? And that was a glaring reminder of that. Yeah. But number two, that it just doesn't feel like it was in this lifetime to me. Yeah. It, it was kind of like everything just stopped. Yeah. And then when we started up again, I was like, oh, everything's just kind of started back up. I mean, what was that? It was a very strange time. And I spoke to a lot of artists during that time. And I think it, it, it affected everybody in very different ways, but all with, with, with similar levels of shock and severity. But I think the arts didn't really understand because you need life to translate. I mean, it always was a need for me. Music was my, was my ultimate escape from, you know, stuff that was happening at home and... Um, you know, I was I was a I was an anxious kid. I still am like very anxious. Um, but Same. but yeah, um, I'd like I was up at night thinking like <laughs> meteorite was going to hit. Like I don't know, read something in the news. I always read the news. I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't know it was anxiety. I, I again, I assumed like everyone was was scared and anxious about yeah. things. And and then the second I I started, I played clarinet for a long time like, in an orchestra and. And then I and then I taught myself guitar and and then I started singing and, um, and then the second I I learned to sing and play at the same time you know it was it was uh, it was just like I got locked into a place of safety in my in my voice and in my songs and um, and then I had that pretty much you know all the way through my teens and then my twenties um, and then and then when it stopped you know it really my anxiety like came straight back and I suddenly found myself you know like scared of everything again and. I'm um, like even like like I said like the the act of just like, just singing is is so um is so good for you. And then we come back to like you know come back to the to 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 the world as we knew it and we get to decide how much do I want to go back going forward? Like how much do I want to take with me? I was going really fast in 2019. Yeah. Like a thousand miles <laughs> an hour, right? There weren't enough planes on the tarmac for me to run and chase adventures and things and it was great and now i'm like a little scared of that like it's mm. getting back to that now and i'm like wow there's a lot of stuff going on what did you not want to bring with you i mean i had no choice but to go forward because i had a child and that changes everything, everything. it did for me anyway it was like i mean that happening in lockdown like it was a lot you know it was a lot and um i i assumed you know when i when i had arthur that i could just you know go back to normal crack on with my like I don't know, 10K runs and, yeah, yeah. Um, and then get in the studio and everything would just be great. Um, but no, it was it was not that at all. I realized that 
I didn't factor in how much I wanted to spend time with him, how much I wanted to just be around him That's all it. the time. People think it's like a new job. It's not. Yeah. It becomes the only job you want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that you know, that became my my new life, and um, and it is my new life, and it's it, he is the biggest thing in my world, and um, it's it has changed everything for me. Um, um, I don't think I've changed as a writer yet. I, I certainly haven't like found that space yet where I want to write about motherhood. It's coming. I can feel it coming. It's such an intimate thing. I remember seeing some footage of you. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a Lollapalooza somewhere. You came, Headline that once. God, yeah. oh, that's mad to think about. And you yeah. came out. This was a little bit earlier in the day, but not the daytime. It was evening. You came out and uh, it was just a, mm. yeah, I mean, it was like good luck following that. Yeah. You and your band on your day, man. Unbelievable. That's a big one. I love playing festivals. It's my favorite thing to do. You're really good at it. I haven't done them for, I've got some this, this summer, but like not a huge amount. Next year, next year is going to be the year. We were talking a little bit about, you know, going deeper and I was saying how I think, you know, you're writing at your highest level. And somehow you're finding these 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 ways to to tell these stories. And you talked about the role of art in your life, and the the safety that you find in it. And yet, success brings with it lots of different lefts and rights of that central experience. And they're not safe. They're mm. scary and out of control. And people talking and writing and taking pictures and da 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 da. And you're a recognizable human being. That whole year was it went so fast. I you know, one minute I was like. At telling the people at uni, I was studying drama at uni. I wanted to, mm. I thought, you know, I didn't think music was going to happen for me, so I thought maybe I'll act a bit, maybe I'll be a drama teacher. I don't know all these all these different things. And I even thought, you know, maybe I'll just stay here and work in the theatre. I worked and I had a couple of jobs there, and I thought oh, I could just carry on with these, and I'm making like an all right amount of money. I mean, not much money, but like yeah, you know, at the by. time for a student, like I was doing well. And um, and then I told them I was going to. I said, you know, I've got these songs um, and um, I've got a bit of interest in them. So I might move to London and, and see what happens. And they were understanding. They were like, we well, can come back if it doesn't work out. And so I moved to London, uh, you know, absolutely no money, uh, took my guitar. And um, and it just so happened that just as I got to a point where I was like, you know, what, I'm going to move back to Canterbury and just carry on with these jobs. Mm -hmm. I then I then signed, signed the record deal and it just it like exploded. I, that's the only way I can describe it. It just... It was just chaos. Um, I was suddenly I was performing on Jules Holland, you know, yeah. something I'd watched forever, yeah. and I, I was playing it so cool in my head, and that's that's why. Sorry, not in my head. In my head, my head was I was just like alarms were going off, but on the outside, I was like, yeah, I can, I can go, I go and play live on Jules Holland. You yeah, know, it was easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, you know, my brain was just like taking all these notes down. I mean, like, you know, at some point you're going to have to not pay for this, but like you're going to have to like acknowledge this yeah. madness. Yeah, and, process. And that came out as like when I you know, started having these panic attacks. And and so because I just wasn't processing anything. I was just letting it all happen. It can be a lot as well, to be fair to you. Like I remember when when it really dawned on us at Radio 1 that, that, that you were going to be this artist for now and like, oh, okay, we need new voices. We need new music. We need it. It's like it keeps us moving forward. And um, I look back, I look back on those times now, and I'm I'm so glad that that younger artists growing up seem to have a better grasp on how to manage their own narrative. At least they seem to. It's different now. It's like you you have more control, but you're also like, what the hell is going on? Like I don't know, you know. There's so many different ways of now um, putting your music out there and and giving yourself. Like, do I give too much? Do I give too little? That guy what do I do? Crazy. Yeah, it's like, do, am I giving away too much, or or like you know, am I, am I not giving enough? And so it's, it's that thing now where like, yeah, you can, you can, you can put everything out there or you can like still keep it locked in and maybe that's better for your sanity. But you just know that people are just like desperate for like information, desperate for, you know, they want to know you. They want to know every single thing that goes into a song. They now want to know a song before it even comes out, it even gets played on the radio you for the first time. You can talk directly to us about that. Whereas that was exactly the same back in the 2008s, 9s and 10s. <laughs> but there were people... Like, like forcing you to tell people or like chasing you for that information. Yes. Literally in the street. Yes. I mean, they, yeah, that's their the, job. It was, I, I, again, it was like a naivety thing. I, I, it was all new to me. And part of it, I guess I started to realize quite quickly was that I had to do interviews and I had to tell yeah. people about myself. And, you know, in a kind of innocent way, I was like, well, this is my family background. I, I come from, like, I don't know, people like to say like the modest background thing. Yeah. Um, 
I, you know, I don't come from anything. Um, and uh, and I was re really honest about that because I felt like it just showed people where my music was coming from and that was just my story. And then yeah. suddenly the narrative was just like my my background and that I come from like a poor family and, um, and you know, stuff to do with my family. And so it became all kind of focused on that. And then... And then, you know, people people were enjoying the songs like, and the music I was putting out, clearly, because I was, like, selling records, but it just felt like it just... The wires got crossed. It, it wires got crossed, and it stopped being about my music and more about... And that's what happens, you know, that's the, the tricky thing, is that you end up becoming somebody that people are interested in far beyond the music that you do. That's how they get you, right? That's how society gets you, is they, they keep saying it's about the music, it's about the music, but they find a way to make it something much bigger. It's like, you agreed to go and take part in a royal event because of the music. Yeah. Because you were asked to sing. That's right. And then it, it ain't about the music, Ali. It's yeah. about the royal event. I know. That, oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. I, I'll always remember that because just the mm. hype around that whole thing was, was mad. Uh, Whose wedding was it? At the time, Prince William's wedding to, it was the big one to, yeah it was the big one it was yeah, the big one I to, couldn't remember to, to Catherine yeah um, wow. so um, it was yeah at the time you know it was it was a big thing um, you know it was like Jay-Z was going to be there Gaga was going to be there <laughs> and, and I was just like, That's, ah, like in the, you know in the background knowing that it's just going to be me and like my my, uh, my little band and um, that was that was mad that's but yeah history. that's history as well it's no longer a festival or a moment that you can trace back to when your life changed that is history. But you know, they loved they loved the album. It's funny, isn't it? You know, because someone who's suffering from from anxiety as well, the stuff I make the biggest deal out of is the stuff that everyone thinks is the smallest. Like what? Just like you know, like I have a conversation with someone and think that they got the wrong end of the, of, of of my what I was trying to say, and my wife will be like, "I was there, it was fine." But I'll be like three days into it, still oh obsessing over this. Oh my god, that is this. a story in my life, and right? it's just I've got to shake it off at some point. But you know? yet you can stand in a cathedral and <laughs> sing at the royal wedding of the future <laughs> king and queen of England. Totally fine, totally that fine. I, that I am fine. That is my like safe place. When I say, <laughs> I promise you, like I don't know what it is. Oh I just when god. I'm on stage, I can. I can sing can for it. hours, but you know, put me in a room with people, or like last night at a party. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Did you go to VF Vanity Fair? Yes, I did. I mean, that is a room to be anxious in. It, it is, it's but at the high same level time, glamour. people are people are people are friendly. Yeah, of like course. it's not like um, uh, you know, I don't, I generally I don't think people recognize me, especially with with brown hair. Um, but people are friendly. You know, they come and introduce themselves. Met some like, you know, famous people. <laughs> So was it fun last night? It was. It, it was fun. I'm like trying out some new things. Uh -huh. And um, I am thinking about doing a bit of acting. Good. Um, so it was nice to just meet creatives. You know, I met some like mm -hmm. script writers, met mm -hmm. some directors, met some producers. And just mm -hmm. like you said, like LA isn't just like actors and, uh, you know, it's not just like the glamour. It's like all the people who are working on things for years, like scripts and screenplays. And it's just like... You know, one of one of the films, like I heard that um, they're all quite on the Western Front. They were working on it for like ten years yeah. or something, and this yeah. woman was just like funding it from Scotland. I know that she was like paying for it all herself. And you know, these people have like worked so so hard. So it's like it's not glamour. It's like I was I was meeting the people you know behind the scenes who um, were just like living it. I never know what to expect from you, especially after the last couple of albums. I'm like, okay, you can swerve across mm. the across the Gonna freeway of swerving. life. Yeah. Good, but you definitely sound like you and your friends had fun. Like you say, getting back into pop music. I honestly think it was like a month. I, I we did this a month after I had Arthur, and I was in some kind of weird post baby, trance. like post birth trance. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. 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 The whole thing was a trance, a pregnancy too. It's clearly put me in. I don't know, put me in some kind of good writing space. Mm. You know, who am I singing about? Like, who's the who's the savior? I don't know. Like, I was just imagining. Yeah. I had this kind of picture, like this vision of like somebody walking into a dance floor and just this kind of overly sickly romantic notion of somebody saving someone from the depths of darkness. Everybody else fades know. into the shadows and you're yeah. left just dancing in the middle of the dance floor beneath the mirror ball. I'm happy if I make a song that doesn't sound like anything else and um, and you know, eraless. I like I like I like making music that could be from any time. I wonder kind of how, how high you really set the bar for yourself there when it comes to listening back to something. The idea of, of being inspired versus kind of 
being overly attached to a sound, a feeling, or a mood of the moment because it's moving all the time around you and you have great taste. So I know you listen to music all the time. I do, yeah. I mean, I I am I am a, like a TikToker. Am I allowed to say that? You are because you're good at it. I, People like you on it. Look, what, the, the videos that, you know, my label make and um, management make just, you know, don't often get the same, like, uh, attention as me just, like, coming home, you know, late night, of, dancing in my kitchen. Of, because it's not authentic. People want to yeah. know you're in charge yeah but then it gets addictive and then you're like oh you know y- you can just keep pushing it like how far do i go with how how much people know about me like how much of right. a dork i am you know um like how how i feel like the mysterious thing is just like gone you can't no one can do that anymore it's nice you know when, when i perform these new songs it just feels so good to perform them it doesn't feel like i'm like I'm using myself up so much and feel like it doesn't feel as exhausting. I think people listen to your music, especially the heavier moments when you have to go through that process and they think like, man, you know, Ali's wearing it. I'm sure you are. But I like that you showed that other side of you. You seem just in a good place. Yeah, I, I am. Like, I I feel like music is good. I feel good about that. I don't, I don't, you know, like sit around and wait for things to happen to me, but there are moments that just were meant, you know, meant to be. I don't, it's not like I'm like constantly like seeking, uh, like you know I'm not constantly seeking collaborations. But when they happen, they happen. The anxiety is 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 the hardest thing for me, and it is a it is something I have to deal with on a daily basis. But like I said, when I come out of it, it's just the best feeling in the world. The fact that we're still able to connect and talk about music and life is it's not lost on me. You know, it's a, it, I'm very grateful for the fact that we're both still here and we're all still here. So. We are grateful, all musicians, yeah. anyone who's ever come across you and oh, been lucky enough to be interviewed by you. We're so grateful for you. So thank you. Mm-hmm.